My hope is that the spaces, my hope is that these programs, my hope is that the uh, energy and the generosity of uh, the donors shine for Notre Dame, but make Notre Dame come alive in the world in a way that it maybe hasn't in the past. Joe Becker is the director and curator of sculpture for the Racklin Murphy Museum of Art, which opens to the public December 1st. This 132,000 square foot complex is being constructed in two phases, the first of which brings to the University of Notre Dame campus and Greater South Bend community 70,000 square feet of renowned art collections considered among the finest in the country. My conversation with Joe happened simultaneously as the finishing touches were being put on the new museum, a centerpiece of Notre Dame's art district. Hear what he has to say in this episode of ND Works. Joe, we are in the Racklin Murphy Museum of Art, and I have to tell you, I've walked past the building many times. I've driven past the building many times. And to walk inside today, and this is the first time I've had a sneak peek, it took my breath away. It really did. I didn't expect, as beautiful as the outside is, I couldn't have imagined the beauty that you see when you walk inside. Well, thank you very kindly. There are a lot of uh, individuals and a lot of artists and a lot of objects that I hope have collectively made that impression possible for you. And hopefully our listeners can hear that we are truly in the museum. We're here in this beautiful gallery. Um, Because our listeners can't (laughs) see, uh, can you give us a description of what we see around us right now in the gallery we're in? Sure. So um, I love the echo. I do too. Um, and it reminds me how wonderful it is to have 16 foot ceilings in every space and to have beautiful hardwood floors in all of the galleries and in the public spaces to have gorgeous uh, terrazzo. So there are so many of these elements that you don't necessarily think about in another context that give this place uh, a sense of grandeur, give it a sense of uh, gravitas at the same time um, that the collection. Uh, that the donors, that the university, that the community merits. Talk to me about the artwork itself. Many of the pieces we're seeing were on display in the Snipe Museum, uh, but many you may have not seen in your previous location. Sure. So um, there are about a thousand works of art on display here uh, when we open up, and that'll probably be a good uh, average for us. Things primarily from the permanent uh, collection uh, across 23 galleries, across uh, three stories. So I think that even if you knew the Snite and knew it well for many years, uh, things are going to seem very, very different. Um, What I just mentioned about the scale of the space, about the uh, wonderful floors and so on and so forth, give the works a way to breathe, give them an opportunity to be in a way that they weren't necessarily afforded at the Snite. The Snite was a wonderful home, and I'm I'm so fortunate that we still have access to that as a research sort of more back of house uh, center, but things do feel very different. And even those things that you knew quite well, if it's a particular painting or a specific sculpture, it's going to seem very different here. In addition, um, all during the planning process and during COVID, we took the opportunity to uh, look at the whole of the collection, uh, the other curators and I. There are um, many pieces that were in storage, uh, which is very typical for a museum, but we decided to bring out. Um, there are many pieces that underwent in recent years uh, conservation. Um, we invested very significantly in conservation of the collection. So um, I think think that in general, uh, people will think it's a very new collection in a very new space. Talk about the difference between opening a new museum, an art museum, and maybe another construction project um, that someone might be familiar with on campus or in the community. Yeah, well, I think that one of the things that you have to remember about an art museum is that the premium is placed on the visual, that what you see matters deeply and broadly. 
And so in any construction project, you want things to go well in terms of the quality of construction and engineering. You want the aesthetic experience to be good. But you know, this is very different than a library or a research institute or you know, anything that would have uh, more utilitarian purposes attached to it. You know, there is so much placed on the relationship of one object to the next, the relationship of the colors that are selected for the wall to the object. One of the things that I talk to people about is, you know, we've all been to a situation where we've gone to a concert, a symphony, and, you know, things get very, very quiet or to a play, and then all of a sudden there's this beep, you know, or there's this cough, and you hear that in a way that you don't necessarily hear and experience in another circumstance. So it's, um, it's, it's the visual, but at a very high premium. Speaking of, I don't know if the, if our mics picked it up, but this is an active construction zone. Yes. <laughs> really yes. just, um, we are fine tuning. We are, we are fine tuning. At this moment, tell me what's going on in preparation for the opening. Sure. So the galleries are, you know, 98% uh, in place, but there's a lot that's going on in terms of tweaking lighting. There's a lot that's going on in terms of uh, looking at some of the labels. There's a lot that's going on in terms of adjusting some of the sculptures, you know, a couple of inches. So we're very, very, very tuned into those kind of uh, fine details. That's where we are right now. We are are also on the other front uh, experimenting with bringing students uh, in. You know, this is now at the entrance to campus. We want to see how long does it take the students to get down here? You know, what's their experience when they come inside? So in the last two weeks, we've had uh, many, 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 many of the Moreau students come here. We decided to use them as our guinea pigs, so to speak, because they're freshmen. They have no preconceived idea of what an art museum at the University of Notre Dame is all about. Uh, it's been a wonderful experience and just in those two weeks we welcomed more than a thousand undergrads into the building so it was very very rewarding. Um, but for me <clears throat> I think maybe one of the most wonderful things was being stopped on the street by people that teach the Moreau Seminar Really? And we're saying thank you. You know, I don't necessarily know them, but they know me. And um, back and forth across campus. And it just kept happening these last two weeks that faculty were coming up to me saying it was an amazing experience. Thank you so much. You know, the space is wonderful. You know, thank you. <laughs> thank you in return for bringing your students. What do you think was resonating with them? I think that when you come into this space, and granted, I'm a little biased, <laughs> that, um, you know, it feels like a, a major art museum. It does. A major art museum that transcends a university experience, that transcends a Midwestern experience. You know, it's just a major art museum. And, you know, when I came to the university five years ago, one of my strongest impressions was that the quality of the collection and the talent of the staff had long been uh, a candle under a bushel. Mm -hmm. And that if I could do nothing else, it was to remove that bushel and to let that candle thrive. And my hope is that the spaces, my hope is that these programs, my hope is that the uh, energy and the generosity of uh, the donors shine for Notre Dame, but make Notre Dame come alive in the world in a way that it maybe hasn't in the past. Joe, I think the candle is very much burning bright. <laughs> I'm so glad much. to see it. Thank you for this opportunity. Yeah. I can't wait to be here for well, the opening. Welcome back. We've got a few exciting days. We've got uh, lots of things happening here. December 1, 2, 3. It's a celebration of everybody, community, Notre Dame, South Bend, the world. Very well said. Thanks, Joe. You're welcome. Thanks for listening to the ND Works podcast produced by the Office of Internal Communications. This episode was edited by Michael Weens with original music by Alex Mansour. I'm your host, Jenna Liberto. Thanks for listening.